In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint Thousand Suns. Hello everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So this time I'm going to take you through the steps I took for painting this really cool looking Thousand Suns miniature. Uh, it is actually the Exalted Sorcerers, um, and they come as a pack of three. So if you haven't seen them before, and a lot of people have told me since I've painted this miniature that they hadn't even seen this miniature before, then uh, please do check out the links below, because it's definitely worth picking up a pack, because the details on these are absolutely insane. In fact, I think I'd even go as far as to say that this is my favourite helmet in all of 40k. And I'm going to open that up to discussion actually because I'm sure there's a lot of people screaming at the screen now saying no way this is better. So drop a comment below, let me know what you think, do you agree with me? Or better still, tell me what you think is the best helmet in 40k. Also if you do enjoy this video then please do give it a like um, and if you want to see more videos then please 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 hit that subscribe button now and don't forget to push the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. And finally, I just need to say that massive thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel so far. I really appreciate your support. You guys are absolutely fantastic. And with that, I'm going to shut up and get on with some painting. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is I'll be painting this model as sub-assemblies. That basically means I'm going to paint a few parts separately and then assemble the model at the end. There's a couple of reasons for this. The first one is if I was to paint it as a single part, there are details I wouldn't be able to access easily with my paintbrush. And the second reason is so that it makes it easier to show you what I'm doing on camera. If you'd like to know some more details in terms of the process I take for preparing my models and the primers I use before painting, then please do check out the link above and that'll take you through all the steps you need to know. Starting off then, I'm going to do a base coat to all of the blue armour and for this I'm going to use Adriatic Blue from Scale 75. Now I ummed and quite a bit about this, should I do the blue first and then the gold trim or do gold trim and put the blue inside and in hindsight I'm still not really sure which would be the easiest way. Um, if you know then please do drop a comment below um, but either way I do think you're going to do some corrections so um, I went with blue. Now the main thing really with this stage that you need to concentrate on is getting this blue down nice and smoothly. So for this I added a touch of water, it's flowing really cleanly from my brush and I'm going to apply it as two separate coats to make sure I get it nice and clean and smooth. Now I don't need to be particularly neat at this stage because whatever I paint over I'll be coming back to paint a different colour anyway. But again I am concentrating on making sure that this paint goes down cleanly and smoothly. Not forgetting, of course, to paint in the blue onto all of the sub-assemblies as well. So because I've thinned my paint with some water, it means it's nice and easy to get into all of these cracks and recesses. But do take care, don't let it pull up into any of the areas because you want it to dry nice and smooth. Okay, with the second coat of the Adriatic Blue now applied, uh, it's already looking really punchy and vibrant. And now I'm going to paint in any grey details. This is things like the armour joints, any leather details, hoses on the backpack and the um, handle grips on the spear. And for this I'm going to use some Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. Just as with the last stage, the aim here is to get a nice clean smooth finish. So I've added a little bit of water to the paint uh, just to help it flow really smoothly and I'm just applying it as a single coat because it's actually got quite good coverage and uh, making sure it goes into all the recesses and the creases of these details. Just take your time wherever the grey meets the blue just to make sure that you get nice clean sharp lines there. Um, if you do make any mistakes though, don't worry, just let it dry fully and then go back and correct them with some Adriatic Blue. And again, if like me you're painting it as sub-assemblies, don't forget to paint all the grey details on all of the separate parts. Moving on to the next step, and that's going to be painting in the yellow stripe details. And for this, I'm going to use some Sahara yellow from Scale 75. Depending on which model you're painting, you might find these stripes are actually quite tricky to get to and a little bit awkward to paint. So the best method I found was to paint the blue stripes in first, making sure the paint's gone into those recesses, and then you can just paint in the yellow stripes on the top. 
you'll find the coverage of this paint even when it's thinned down with a little bit of water is actually not that bad but I still ended up painting two coats to make sure I got a solid finish. The key thing with painting these is just to try and be as careful and neat as possible but mistakes do happen so again just let it dry and then go back and correct as necessary. Moving on now, I'm going to paint the inside of all the robe and cloak details, and for this I'm going to use more gas bone from Games Workshop. Even though this is a Games Workshop base paint and has quite good coverage, I've still thinned it down quite a lot because I want to try and get a nice smooth finish, so I'll be applying multiple layers to build up to a solid colour. Okay, with the inside of the robes now done, I'm going to do exactly the same but with the outside and for this I'm going to use some fuchsia from scale 75. So this is exactly the same as we've just done with the inside of the cloak. Uh, you need to thin the paint with some water to get that nice clean smooth finish. This is a little bit more transparent this paint so you will need to build it up to a solid finish with some multiple layers. Um, I also find that if you paint in the direction of the folds of the cloak the paint will go on more smoothly and evenly and it will allow you to uh, prevent it from pooling in those recesses. Okay, moving on to the most exciting and possibly daunting part of painting the model, and that's painting in all of the gold trim. And for this, I'm going to use some Regency Gold from Dark Star Miniatures. There really is no getting away from the fact that this is the most time consuming step to painting the model, but it is worth putting in that effort and taking your time because trying to rush it will just make it look messy and uh, spoil the model. So, just have some patience, work your way around, be as clean and neat as you can. Um, obviously mistakes will happen, so let it dry and then reapply the uh, colour that you need just to neaten things back up again. But like I say, just take your time and it will be worth it, I promise. Not forgetting to paint in all of the sub-assemblies of course, and don't forget that you'll need that touch of water to make sure it goes on cleanly and smoothly. Right, okay, so that's all of the gold painted in and um, it's taken a little bit of time but I think it's definitely worth the effort. So moving on now, I'm going to paint in the few silver details that are on the model and for this I'm going to use graphite from Dark Star Miniatures. So there's actually not that many details that are silver on this model. Um, there's these beads across the back here, um, some details on the backpack, that sort of thing. Um, but obviously just take your time and pick out those details nice and carefully. Um, so that you don't uh, mess up any of the paintwork that you've done already. If you do make any mistakes, obviously just let it dry and correct it as necessary. And for my final base coat colour, I'm going to paint in all of the details which are going to be the ghostly green colour and I'm going to base coat those with some Ulthorn Grey from Games Workshop. Now ideally all of these details will already just be a pale grey from your primer but in reality there's probably been quite a few mistakes and a bit of paint from other base coats gone onto them so this step is very much just a neating up and brightening up step so um, with a little bit of thinned down Orthon grey pick out all the details that you want to be the ghostly green and make sure that they're nice and clean and crisp. And that includes everything from the gems and jewels to the eye lenses on the helmet. Okay, so with all of those base colours now applied, it's time to add some shade and shadow to the model. And we're going to start off by shading the blue armour. And for this, I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of Space Wolves Grey and Contrast Medium from Games Workshop. Now, because I want to keep the blue armour nice and bright, I'm only going to apply this contrast paint as a recess shade. So what that means is I'm going to take a small amount on my brush and I'm going to run it into all of the creases and the recesses around the outside of the blue panels, just to give that extra shadow and definition. So you can let the paint do all the work for you here. I'm barely touching my brush to the model and I'm just letting it flow from the brush into each of these creases. If you do make any mistakes or you make too heavy a line, then it's important to let it dry completely and then you can go back and correct it with the blue. 
For the textured panels such as these and the ones on the wings of the backpack, I found it was easier just to shade the whole panel, uh, let it dry fully and then go back with a light dry brush of the Adriatic Blue just to pick out those high points. Just work your way around the model and pick out all of those recesses and areas that you need to be shadowed. Um, as this is a contrast paint, it will take a little bit longer to dry. So I recommend that you apply it and leave it to dry completely for about 30 minutes. Moving on to the next step, and now I'm going to apply uh, a wash to all of the Eschen Grey and Graphite details. And for this, I'm going to use Null Oil from Games Workshop. Nice and easy step this one. Um, main things to concentrate on are not to overload your brush with the wash. Um, try and apply it evenly and smoothly across the whole of the surface and encourage it to settle into all of those recesses. As this is a wash it will take a little bit longer to dry and you need to make sure it's fully dry before you move on to the next stage. Now I'm going to shade all of the gold trim and for this I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. Exactly the same as we've just done with the Null Oil, I'm going to apply the Seraphim Sepia over all of the gold trim. Now this time I am going to have to be a little bit extra careful to make sure that the uh, shade doesn't go onto any of the blue armour. So I'm making sure I have a, quite a small brush and I'm applying it in small quantities so that I have as much control as possible. Not forgetting to apply to all of the sub-assemblies of course and making sure that it is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. With that gold trim now fully dry I'm going to apply a wash to the outside of the robes and for this I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of purple tone from the Army Painter and Lamia Medium from Games Workshop. So I've done this with the medium because I'm not quite sure how dark I want these cloaks to be yet and it's far easier to add more wash than it is to take it away. So I'm going to apply one coat of the 50-50 mix and then see what I think. Right so I've applied one coat and it looks quite nice but I'd like it to be a bit darker again. So I'm going to add a second coat of the 50-50 mix just to darken it down a little bit more. Moving on now, I'm going to shade the inside of all the robes and for this I'm going to use Light Tone from the Army Painter. For this step, it's worth pointing out that this is Light Tone from the Army Painter, not to be mistaken for Soft Tone. They are actually quite different colours, so just be careful with that. And the other thing to point out is because this is quite a large, flat, smooth surface, um, just make sure that you don't apply too much wash or let it run out of control. And as always, let the shade fully dry before moving on to the next stage. So those washes have added lots of great shadow, but it made it very dark. So now I'm going to brighten things back up again, starting with the gold armor. And for this, I'm going to use Renaissance Gold from Dark Star Miniatures. So what you're looking to do at this stage is you're going to paint in the gold details and trim again. But this time you're going to leave the uh, recesses where that shade is settled so that they'll form the shadows of the gold armor. Now, before you start panicking that it's going to take forever to the gold trim again, this really isn't as time consuming as you might think because you don't need to paint the inside edges of the gold trim where it meets the blue. Instead, you're actually just going to be painting the top surfaces of the gold. So actually, this stage is really quite quick. By adding a touch of water, not only does this paint then go on nice and smoothly, but it also becomes slightly transparent, which means that it's really great because it will blend in with the shaded uh, gold underneath. And you only need to apply one coat to bring back that shine. So as you can see, I'm not being particularly careful because I'm nowhere near those blue edges. And I'm just going to work my way around the gold trim and brighten it all up again. Moving on now and I've just been looking at the robes and I think that this fold in particular needs to be brightened up. So for this I'm going to use Bone White from Vallejo. 
I've thinned my paint with some water and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to paint down in downward strokes following the contours of the fold. Now the paint is obviously going to be a little bit transparent but that's good because it means I can build up a couple of layers and actually build a transition into the shadow going round this corner. And now I'm going to paint in the tassets on the front of the model and for this I'm going to start off with a base coat of Blue Horror from Games Workshop. Dead easy this step, just thin the paint down with a little bit of water and you'll want to apply several layers to build up to a solid colour. To add some detail to these tassets I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Um, it might work, it might not, I'm not sure, but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to try and do some subtle freehanding and just try and put in a bit of a pattern that you might not notice straight away but it will draw your eye later. So for this I'm going to draw some lines in using some Ulthorn Grey from Games Workshop. Apologies if this is difficult to see. When I said subtle, it looks like my camera can't really pick up the difference either. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm painting downward stripes with some thinned Ulthorn Grey. Now you want the consistency to be similar to where you're doing edge highlighting so that it will leave a nice clean, smooth, straight line. And then when I've done the lines going down in one direction, I'll turn the model round and then I can do downward lines to join them up and hopefully make a nice looking pattern. And to finish off, I'm just going to edge highlight the tassets with the Ulthorn Grey. As with any freehanding, there's always going to be little mistakes and uh, bits that need to be touched back up again. So let it dry and then go back in with your Blue Horror and you can neaten up those lines and make everything look brilliant. Moving on now to the next step, which is going to be painting in all of those glowy green details. And for this, I'm going to use some thin down Mortarian Green Clear with some Lamin Medium. So the ratio I went with to start off with was a little bit too dilute. It was three parts Lamia medium to one part Mortarian green. Um, and in hindsight, I should have gone for a stronger mix. So I'd probably recommend that you guys start off with two parts Lamia medium to one part Mortarian green. Um, this wasn't really a problem for me because like I said before, you can always add more. It's hard to take away. So I actually applied several layers to build up to the color and intensity of green that I needed. But what you're looking to do is just apply it as you would a normal shade or wash over all of the Ulthorn Grey that you've painted in before and let it settle into those recesses. And don't forget, always make sure it's fully dry before moving on to the next stage, which is going to be applying an edge highlight to all of the blue armour. And for this, I used a mix of Adriatic Blue and Arctic Blue from Scale 75. So for this blue, I wanted quite a subtle highlight. So the mix I used was one part Adriatic to three parts Arctic blue. But if you wanted a stronger, sharper highlight, then you could easily go for pure Arctic blue. Um, as it turns out, there isn't actually that many edges to the blue because most of it is gold trim. But all I'm doing is I'm working my way around the model, picking out all of these sharp edges with just the, uh, the tip of my brush. Um, and I'm doing very light contact just to pick out those edges. If you'd like some more tips and tricks on how to do edge highlighting, then I've made a video which you can get from the link above. Which brings us on now to adding a final highlight to all of the gold trim. And for this, I'm going to use Chrome from Vallejo's Metal Color range. Ordinarily, I wouldn't use Chrome for this highlight, but for this particular gold, I want it to be super bright and shiny in contrast to the flat matte blue. So in this particular case, it's perfect. Now, I've not had to dilute this in any way. I'm using it just as it comes out the bottle. Um, it does mean it's slightly thinner than the paints you've been using so far. And it is slightly transparent as well. So it does mean that you can blend really nicely with it. The downside is because it's thinner, you need to make sure you only load a little bit onto your brush just so that you don't lose that control. Uh, other than that, work your way around the gold trim and pick out all those edges.
As you can see, I've assembled most of the model now, and I'm just going to move on to do a final highlight to some of the ghostly green, and for this I'm going to use Althorn Grey from Games Workshop. So really it's just a flame detail on the spear that I'm highlighting with the Althorn Grey, and I've just felt that it needed to be a little bit paler towards the end and just have a bit of a sharper highlight. Um, I've just thinned the Althorn Grey down a little bit, and I'm just going to pick out those details. Which brings us on to the final highlight now, and that's to all of the red cape details. And for this, I'm going to use Magenta from Pro Acryl. And all you're really looking to do here is just pick out those sharpest edges on the folds, just to give that extra little bit of highlight. So all you need to do now is finish assembling the model and get it on its base. Um, apologies, there is one final step which is the weathering, but I did that as part of the basing, which is why I didn't film it. But all it is is a light dry brush of some weathering powder. In this particular case, I used bone dust from Forge World, and you just need to dry brush that onto the cape and the boots before you do your final varnish. And that's it, the model's complete. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, then please hit that like button and drop a comment below. Let me know what you liked about it and what you'd like to see more of. To keep things really simple for you, I've put links in the description below to where you can get everything that I used in this video, including a paint bundle for every paint used, and they're at discount price as well, so it's definitely worth checking out. If you'd like to see more of these videos, then please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be told whenever I post another video. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.